I mean, if you look at the difference of, of, of a signal receiving a radio signal, receiving uh, uh, the amount of errors in a radio signal being more than 10%, you barely can understand the message. So think about it. 40% difference in the sequence of amino acids. So the fact that that can occur within life and the, the sequences being that different is clearly, a, uh, makes it clearly, um, make, makes it abundantly clear that you don't need just one particular sequence of a protein for that protein to come into existence. You have millions, millions of different sequences that can do that same job. So that makes it even more probable of the chaos engine being able to come up with multiple versions of proteins to do the same metabolic reaction. And again, the chaos engine is creating a repetitive cycle that can have multiple outcomes and multiple uh, sequences of amino acids, totally random. But what's important, again, the reason why these multiple sequences can do the same metabolic reaction is because of amino acids properties. Amino acids form repeating structures. They either form an alpha helix or a beta sheet. And any sequence, those sequence, those structures can form regardless of the sequence of the amino acids. So they can be completely variable. So what's important, like I said before about amino acids, I mean about enzymes, is that the sequence for their structure doesn't matter. What matters is the particular amino acids placed within the active region. Now, amino acids form repeating structures, alpha helixes, pleated beta sheets, and those are the structures that create the active regions of these enzymes. You see what I'm getting at? These regions are repeatable because they form between alpha helixes and beta sheets and beta sheets with beta sheet, beta sheet with an alpha helix, alpha helix with alpha helix. When these structures unite, they form activating regions, active sites, chambers. What's important in those chambers is the placement of particular amino acids, which according to life is any of 20. And these would be the most reactive ones in the oceans because as the currents take the amino acids, the amino acids that are gonna react are only the amino acids that are activated at that certain pH. Again, activated, I don't know how abundantly, or how rigor, um, uh, how robust that activation will be, but the amino acids that will continue to react at those certain pHs will continue to react at those certain pHs. That's why I believe that life only uses 20. Those are the 20 that were most reactive in the oceans at that time of the 70 different types of amino acids. Those are the ones that were robust enough to activate in the oceanic conditions at that time. Allow the chaos engine to unite them and to take them within the gradients. And as the polypeptides got longer, they formed structures, small structures, large structures, whatever. But as they all went together in the water, at a certain pH, certain ones would become rigid. Others would not become rigid, so they would not react or unite. And then the ones that were rigid and would find each other, they would get an affinity, get together at that pH and react with other available amino acids, 
which is what life does today. Life doesn't break down the food to compounds. It breaks down the food to amino acids, and then it takes those amino acids and utilizes it for itself. Life does not digest other life forms of or nutrients into the basic compounds and the basic elements. It breaks down to amino acids. Amino acids is the amino acids is the level of of uh, complexity. It is the level of um, now reactivity. Yeah, I'm gonna edit this all out, so please bear with me. Um, amino acids is the level of 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 um, damn. Amino acids is the level of complexity of the compounds of the elements. Yeah, of, of the of the structure of elements. Amino acids is the place. It is the level. You, you don't need to go lower to find ways and, and basic compounds to react to form molecules that would eventually lead to life. You don't need, you can go above, which certain researchers do by trying to create cellular structures out of, out of um, fatty acids encapsulating organic material and trying to form cells. I mean, that is several steps above uh, where life needed to start. Amino acids is the right level. It was abundantly brought by meteorites. Uh, experiments done by Professor Blank in the early 2000s showed that uh, for her it was uh, comet impacts would polymerize amino acids. So what she did in her experiments is put water with amino acids the water represents the ice of a comet and the amino acids, of course, the contents of the comet. And then she would impact it in, in these large cannons, air cannons. She would impact the solution to see what she wanted to see was whether the amino acids would survive the impact and be useful on Earth. And what she found was something even better, greater, was that instead of decomposing those amino acids, the amino acids formed chains and became longer. So the energy of the impact, instead of decomposing those amino acids, the energy of the impact was caused to polymerize them. Now, to me, the way she formulated the experiment, which was having amino acids in a capsule suspended in water, is, and impacting it, is an exact duplicate of the conditions on Earth at that time in the Hayden era before life. You had water laden with amino acids being impacted constantly with meteorites, asteroids, and comets. So what was happening at that time? The old impacts of meteors, whether they were laden with amino acids or not, the impact of any rocky meteor would be hitting water containing amino acids. Those impacts would further polymerize the amino acids, therefore giving even more material for the chaos engine to work with as the currents, because regardless if they were impacted or not, those currents are going to continue to work in the ocean and take that material and pass it through the gradients. And those gradients would not go away as long as the atmosphere was laden with carbon dioxide, which it was for billions of years. The chaos engine is unstoppable. It would continue churning, taking those poly polypeptides, passing them through different gradients. Every pH level within the ocean would be a different opportunity for amino acids to interact. So not only are you multiplying by the surface area, the millions of square miles of surface area, 
you also have to multiply each gradient times that surface area of the opportunities of these poly amino acids to react and to cause uh, 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 enzymatic reactions to occur to create the components that will eventually coalesce and allow life to emerge from the oceans. That is the end of my explanation of the chaos engine. I hope uh, it was informative that you were able to follow. Um, hopefully engaging and that it didn't bore the hell out of you. Um, please allow me to uh, give me a chance to become more comfortable speaking to the camera and making these videos. That's the purpose of my 30 day, 30 video challenge uh, to, I mean, there's tons of material I can use. So it's not going to be a, a limiting issue of me being able to make videos. The, the limiting issue is my delivery, my um, forgetfulness of, of what I want to say. Um, this part of the nervousness. Please support me. Please spread the word about my theory. Please like and um, see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>